the end of chapter 243, we saw Yuta slice Kenjaku's head right off. Now, is he really dead? I'm not too sure, but what I can say is that Yuta is the perfect person to do the finishing blow against Kenjaku. From following the story of Jujutsu Kaisen, you can see a pattern of rivalries grow within the story. Yuji vs Sukuna, Gojo vs Sukuna due to the speculation of power and the tease made at the start of the story when they first fought. Yuji vs Mahito was another blood feud. Maki against the Zenin family with her having a rival with Naoya. Gojo vs Geto, ever since Geto turned heel back in the Gojo past arc. But then we have that anomaly, that is Kenjaku. He is the only one that is difficult to picture having a true rival in the story. He's like the puppet master orchestrating these rivalries, but he himself never really had a rival. You can make an argument that maybe Kenjaku and Master Tengen might have had a rivalry since one of his main objectives is to use Master Tengen and his powers. But Master Tengen is an anomaly to the story. He's important. Of course he is, but in terms of having investment for us fans, I don't think there's enough background history for these two characters to have a big time rivalry. Not that we have seen anyway so far in the story. But the person I do feel Kenjaku is perfect to have a rivalry with is in fact Gojo. Now obviously he is dead so we can't exactly see the fruits of the rivalry going forward but I always felt there's a story to be told with Kenjaku and Gojo. Firstly, Kenjaku was the one who took over Geto's body, who as we all know was Gojo's best friend, so that in itself is already motivation for Gojo. Kenjaku was also the one who came up with the plan for the October 31st Shibuya incident in order to capture Gojo and seal him away in the prison row. Gojo even back in season 1 of episode 7, he suspected that there is someone else in charge of the four disaster curses. Back when he battered Jogo and captured him, it was Hanami who came in with the last minute save, but Gojo already knew that Jogo wasn't the mastermind. Kenjaku was right there with Hanami and if Gojo never got distracted, he would have had all of them where he wanted them. But Kenjaku and Hanami were already lurking around and they just about escaped with Jogo. In the Goodwill event arc, Kenjaku plotted the barrier to keep Gojo out in order for Mahito to take Sukuna's fingers. And again, Gojo almost immediately clocked on that the barrier was intended for him, which then eventually led to the road that we got to in the Shibuya incident arc, with Kenjaku showing up inside of Geto's body, revealing that he is possessing Geto, to get Gojo distracted enough for him to get sealed inside of the prison room. So these two characters, even though they never truly met before the Shibuya incident arc, were playing chess moves on one another to get the upper hand. Gojo would have won if Hanami never made the save in season 1 episode 7 but throughout the story the chess game between Kenjaku and Gojo you would say was won by Kenjaku because he did end up defeating Gojo by sealing him away. So that's just a quick summary on what these characters have been plotting against one another well mainly from Kenjaku's side but you can see where I'm coming from. Gojo always suspected that there was another threat apart from the disaster curses, whilst you had Kenjaku scheming his next move in the background. It reminds me of the final season of Yu-Gi-Oh where you had evil Bakura and Yami Yugi sitting across one another and playing a game with all the characters of the past. Yami trying to save Egypt whilst Bakura trying to cause as much chaos as he can, but both of them are still above all the others and are directly involved in everyone's lives. So when you look at it like that, both of these characters do have a rivalry and the fact that Kenjaku took over Geto's body has made it even more personal to Gojo. Look at chapter 221, as soon as he sees Kenjaku, he was ready to kill him right there, saying to him to choose his words wisely as they're about to be his last. But now Gojo is dead and is unable to carry on this grand rivalry between the two characters. But the one character who I think is perfect to finish off Kenjaku is Yuta. Yuta has been described as the second strongest when it comes to the Jujutsu Sorcerer side, the hero side. He is also able to use reverse curse technique. Yuta was the original Yuji for Gojo. He was a mentor for Yuta as we saw in Jujutsu Kaisen Zero with the way he was training him up and even gave his katana for him to concentrate his cursed energy. In Jujutsu Kaisen Zero, we had Geto trying to get to Yuta and kill him in order for him to use Rika and the big epic finale of that movie was Yuta vs Geto. Both of these characters are able to summon cursed spirits to help them fight which is like having two like for like characters fighting each other. And over the years of Geto capturing cursed spirits and now we have seen Kenjaku in Geto's body, he is now able to summon hundreds of cursed spirits. This battle between Yuta and Kenjaku makes it about 
who is the strongest user of Cursed Spirit. Rika is a special grade vengeful Cursed Spirit and can be argued is one of the strongest Cursed Spirits of all time. And you have Kenjaku who can release an army of Cursed Spirits but may not be at the power level of Rika. So you have Yuta with only one Cursed Spirit but is arguably the strongest Cursed Spirit and with an emotional attachment to Yuta that no other character has for Yuta. Whilst on the other hand, you have Kenjaku who has an army of cursed spirits but not as powerful as Rika, which he has been collecting for the time he has been inside of Geto's body, which is on top of the cursed spirits that Geto has been collecting already. Yuta has a cursed spirit that wants to be with him whilst you have Kenjaku who is capturing the cursed spirits. Like the scene we see with Mahito, can't lie, I didn't expect Kenjaku to just absorb him like that. Especially with the way we saw Maito just begging for help. I assumed that Kenjaku would just try and heal him, but no. He just absorbed him like he was just a pawn in his game. Yuta will be the one to inherit Gojo's will as he is strong in his abilities with one of them being he can use a reverse curse technique and he has a cursed spirit that is a special grade. I would have said Yuji as well but Yuji has a death sentence in his name and is destined to die at the end of the story. Just like Yuji, Gojo took a chance with Yuta. He was willing even back in Jujutsu Kaisen Zero to fight off against anyone who came after Yuta. He protected him back then so now he has to take it upon himself as he said back in the Culling Games when he made the proclamation that he will be the one to kill Kenjaku. But let me go over to you guys. What do you guys think? Do you think that the character that should kill off Kenjaku is Yuta? Or do you think that the battle should be saved for someone else? The way I look at it, we have Gojo, the mentor for all the Jujutsu sorcerers. But even with him having students already, he handpicked both Yuta and Yuji and gave them almost special treatment. It's like he chose them personally to adopt Jujutsu sorcery and be his successor. And also, Gojo happens to have two major enemies in Sukuna and Kenjaku. Two big enemies with Sukuna vs Yuji being locked in for the end game of the story and with Yuta already making a threat of killing Kenjaku is also set to be the end game for the story. The two chosen ones picked and protected by Gojo will be the ones to defeat the big two final bosses of this series. Stay tuned for more Jujutsu Kaisen content guys, there will be more videos coming your way and of course, don't forget to subscribe to the Shaman Tribe.